Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing with our series about the excavation at the Jiahu site. Now, Jiahu is a village in Wuyang County, Henan Province, where evidence has been found of thriving human activity during the early Neolithic age. That's around 9,000 to 7,500 years ago. The skill and importance of the artifacts yielded by the Jiahu site saw it nominated as one of the key archaeological discoveries in China in the 20th century. Those artifacts include the oldest seven-hole bone flute ever found in the world. The work of excavating the site began in the early 1980s, but was interrupted many times for various reasons and even came close to being abandoned. These delays were a particular source of anxiety for Zhu Zhi, an archaeologist at the County Cultural Center. In the spring of 1983, as Zhu Zhe was awaiting the return of the experts from the Archaeology Institute, there came a misfortune for which he was totally unprepared. Due to the pressure of a growing population, the residents of Jiahu village were strongly petitioning for the garden plots above the ruins to be reclassified and incorporated into the village plan so that new homes could be built there. If that were to happen, the secrets of the ruins that were slowly coming to light would be lost forever. Zhu Zhe, who was by then on the verge of retirement, went again to the cultural authorities to request they proceed with a test dig. In May of that year, the Hernan Cultural Research Institute sent a team to Jiahu village. Over a period of about two weeks, the team dug three exploratory pits totaling 50 square meters in the middle of the site. As a result, they discovered 11 storage pits and 17 graves, as well as dozens of pottery and stone articles and tortoise shells used for divination. But then, just as Zhu Zhe saw a ray of hope, the experts suddenly decided to halt the project. At the same time the test dig was being conducted at the Jiahu ruins, archaeologists discovered cultural ruins at another site in Hunan province at Shogu in Chang'e Prefecture. The newly discovered site contained artifacts of Peiligang, Yangshao and Longshan cultures. It was indeed a rich store of artifacts, and experts felt that the Shogu site was more promising than the Jiahu site. All their efforts were thus shifted to Shogu, and the work at Jiahu was abandoned. As Zhu Zhe had feared, as soon as the archaeological team left, the residents of Jiahu village again began pressing for permission to build on the site. If the land was excavated to make way for building foundations, the ground surface would be completely torn up and the cultural treasures buried there would be lost forever. In 1984, Zhu Zhe applied for permission to carry out another test excavation. He had never wavered in his belief that an astonishing secret was buried underneath Jiahu village. In the summer of that year, the Provincial Cultural Bureau responded to Zhu Zhe's application by sending another team to Jiahu village. This time, they decided to dig in the area where the village residents wanted to build homes, and they dug 16 exploratory pits. The first four pits exposed a total area of 100 square meters. The government had decided that if the results of this excavation were the same as the previous one, it would grant the residents' requests and allow large-scale construction over the entire site. That summer, 
an archaeological team from the Hunan Archaeological Institute and Zhu Zhe, representing the Wuyang County Cultural Palace, carried out an exploratory dig at the four pits on the east side of Jiahu village. Unexpectedly, the deeper they went, the more artifacts they discovered. The items uncovered included fish bones, the teeth of deer, and fruit stones packed into building foundations. In one pit, they found a large variety of pottery utensils. They included jars, square-mouthed basins, horn-shaped jars, open-mouthed bowls, deep-bellied pots, and three-legged cooking utensils. In pit number one, in the grave of an adult male, the archaeologists discovered a number of perfectly preserved, exquisitely crafted arrowheads. They were as sharp as the day they were buried. In pit number three, they found a complete set of finely crafted bone needles laid out in neat order next to the body of an adult female. A large number of production tools were also discovered in the graves. They included stone weights for fishing nets, stone sickles used for harvesting grain, and daggers for hunting and killing game. The archaeologists were astonished by the sheer number of artifacts unearthed. No less than 15 graves were excavated in Pit 4 alone. Interestingly, the graves were not laid out in an orderly fashion. Some were on top of or encroached upon others. Some of the corpses were missing the head or various limbs, and in other cases, the bodies had been reburied. All of this indicated that this was a collective burial site for the entire tribe, and that it was used over many generations. How long did the original inhabitants live in the area? The sheer quantity of valuable artifacts unearthed, as well as the multi-level nature and complexity of the site, gradually attracted the attention of higher authorities. Priority was then given to having the ruins fully excavated and restored. After receiving authorization from the State Administration of Cultural Heritage, the Hunan Cultural Research Institute reconstituted the Jiahu archaeological team with Zhang Zhujong, the then deputy director of the institute, as team leader. The team arrived in Jiahu village in October of 1984. Thinking he would be camping at the site for just a brief period, Zhang Zhujong packed only one suitcase. Little did he realize that he would end up working at the site for 20 years. On May the 12th, 1986, Zhang Zhujong and the Wuyang County archaeological team began a full-scale excavation of the Jiahu archaeological site. In the two preceding years of exploratory digs, Zhang Zhujong had discovered that the Jiahu ruins were very different from those at Peili Gang. There was far less pottery in the Jiahu graves than in Peili Gang. In fact, in most cases, there was just one earthenware pot. There were, however, far more articles made of bone, and in some cases, they formed complete sets. The bone arrowheads found at Jiahu were comparable in quality to Shang Dynasty arrowheads made of bronze. Their barbs and grooves still gleamed brightly, despite being buried for several millennia. Was the Jiahu site really a remnant of Pei Gang culture? If so, why were there so many differences between them? Zhang Zhujong had his doubts. Uh, 
。而甲壶呢，它是一层一落一层，一层落一层，剥了一层下面再再出来一层，剥了一层下面再出来一层，那骨头密密麻麻的。这个埋葬习俗绝对不是一回事文化上是截然不同。而裴里岗呢，那好多墓葬。女性墓成套随葬什么板什么棒，男性墓成套的随葬这个石铲石镰，这成套成套的，家户没有，家户成套的都是打猎和捕鱼的工具，捕捞的工具非常多，这说明当时的经济形态是完全不同的。Jia Fenliang, a member of the Wuyang County Archaeological Team, had been working non-stop in Pit Ten for five hours. He had just finished cleaning up grave M59, which was on top of grave M78. This was a very complex grave site. In addition to one entire skeleton, he had found the lower half of another. Scattered about the site were a number of tools used to make pottery. This was one of those cases in which two graves encroached upon and damaged each other. When they dug up the inhabitant of grave 55, the whole right side of the body of the inhabitant of grave 78 was ripped apart. Only the left half remained. Jia Fenliang finished numbering all the burial objects in grave 78 and began working on what was left of the body. 清理骨架的，从这个头部向下清理，啊，再清理到这个腿，这个人的腿骨，呃，内拆的时候，发现这一截骨头，啊，原来想着是这个人人体的骨头，结果清理清理了之后，呃，不像是腿骨。在上底下清理的，这个有孔，发现有孔，这都很张老师叫张老师看。Zhang Zhujong was startled to discover that two tube-shaped articles had been placed next to the leg, one on each side. They were both about 20 centimeters long and had seven holes drilled in them at regular intervals. Although slightly damaged, they were still essentially intact. The one on the inner side